The winner of this week's stylized shader is the ice barrier. And if you ever wonder how can you work with a custom node driving gradients in this video, I will show you how to do that. All right, it's been an exciting week, a very hard uh, works, but we finally have almost 200 people voted for the ice barrier to be the next stylized free anime ice shader. So from here on, we will be distributing all of the other winners throughout every Saturday. And if you missed the opportunity to check it out live, you can still go to the Blender page and find the Blender conference for 2020. There were many different and very touching messages from users all over the world, as well as uh, Blender's new features that were presented in that video in particular from the Blender Studio. Uh, the entire crew uh, was amazing. Every artist is um, working a lot and these videos really show how blender has transformed the ecosystem for the blender community with different projects that belong to animation scientific simulation and i guess blender it's coming strong this november if you want to know what that is i'll bid you to check the link below but how to drive ramp colors in a node uh, setup so i'm going to show you once you get to download the file that you get right here, you're gonna be greeted with this entire interface with the shader editor as well as the compositor editor. So how to get to drive the colors from an internal group to an external parameter color, okay? Like you're seeing right here. So the, the goal is to manipulate the colors out here but you do not see any connections directly to the ramp node. And the only way you can really change the colors is, first of all, of course, you can group your nodes. You're, you're going to get your properties. And from there on, we're going to create a, an add mix to color node. Why? Because this has two sockets to input color, which will be used to drive the empty parameter to the outside node. That means that the color, the color information will be inherited into the node and the color itself will be available for the user outside the node group. So make sure that you select the, your color first because that color is going to be inherited or be passed through um, to the user. And all we need to do is just connect it so that Blender knows that this node is going to drive color, otherwise it's going to al always drive value, okay? And step number three, we're going to use drivers. And the way we're going to do that, let me just delete this one. And the way we're going to do that is by um, creating two windows, as you can see right here. One is my internal group showing my material and the other, the left side window it's just my regular material in the upper uh, module, as you can see right here, on the upper topmost level. So let's dive in and let's first copy the parameters here. You can right click on the R on the red channel, then copy driver. And over here, you can click the color, hover the R channel and then click paste. Let's do that again, copy as a new driver click here, go to the G channel, and then paste the driver once again. You need to do this for every channel. Click here one more time, uh, hover the blue channel, copy new driver, and then hover the B channel on the ramp node, and right click, paste, paste new driver, paste driver actually. And you can also do that for the alpha, as you can see right here. When you do that, you're completely driving the color from outside, from the node that we previously created. And that's it, there you have it. You can see both colors are being driven at the same time. And that's the only uh, way I could quickly find. There are some other ways as well that deal with math, multiplying and subtracting stuff. 
Um, I, I think I will be showing that in the latest um, shader, the last shader, shader number 10, which is going to be a huge surprise. Um, but this one does the work well. You can do that for the second color. And therefore, you can drive both colors from the upper uh, node. Okay, so that's marvelous. You can dive into the group in the ice barrier ice group. And you can see the different notes that I've left for you there. And this in particular is the one that has been uh, dealing with the drivers. And this specific group right here, it's called rim light direction. Although I think you can change it into light swipe or swiping light, however you want to call this one. Um, when you select the shader, it's going to show you two keyframes, one at the beginning and one at the end so that you can see how this effect plays up. So you can come here and move this value here on the mapping node. And you can also um, drive the angle, if we can say it so, by moving this normal node as you see fit. And last but not least, you can also adjust the thickness or the light swipe wideness, okay? so. Here you have it, if you play it back, it's going to swipe up and down. So just in case that your node shows this symptom, it's disconnected and you need to reconnect it, okay? So I'm going to do it one more time just so you can remember how to do it just in case that this gets disconnected because you switch scenes or anything like such. So first of all, select your, your color on the gradient on the ramp and remove all the drivers, right click, delete all the drivers. The same thing goes for the second color, do the same, remove all drivers. And once you have done that, pick a color so you can identify what you're doing. And the same thing goes for the second one, raise the alpha value and just dial any color for now. Again, if you append, this should not happen, but in case it does, let's fix it. So now we have the external colors here. Let's save this first. And we want to drive again the internal ramp colors. So how do we do that? We open the color wheel. We go to the red channel, right click, copy new driver. We go to the ramp node, click on the color, go to R, right click, paste new driver paste driver actually so again you repeat the process copy for each channel and then paste it onto the other side and then you get the first color working you do the same operation on the same um, procedure with the second color copy new driver paste driver and sure enough if you move your color wheel from the external node you're going to drive the internal ramp node this is very useful because if you need to um, control specific colors or textures these colors also have different sockets uh, input sockets as a matter of fact that you can also serve to drive the ramp magnificent let's go for another feature here and let's start reviewing the individual parameters so we have this one which is called base color versus frost so you can see right here if you go up you're uh, freezing or rather um, making the frost appearance very cold. The same thing happens down here where you can dial in more snow or more water depending on what you're looking for. These dented flakes are going to make the, the frost somehow uh, larger or smaller. Uh, the cuts, the roughness, the, um, how do you call this, the imperfections on the snow. That's what I meant. And they are also um, doing some parallax effect. So make sure to use that in your camera movements as well. So the next thing goes for the interior refraction size and the interior refraction detail. Next is the, um, the cracks. So we're going to deal with crack size and crack offset as well. So if you dial that parameter, press zero to get to the camera view, 
you can see exactly what you're going to get, okay? So the crack separation also moves the blocks, uh, lines in between. And scratchiness, of course, this is for um, scratch ice. So you can um, scale that as well. And also you have the scratch contrast, which will make it lighter or thinner, or rather than thinner, it, dis it will disappear. So that's why we have a contrast parameter there. So we can continue in, let, let me just get close here. So for the frosted interior water, you can use this parameter to animate your, your ice stuff. If this is a mountain that has um, ocean, through it, you can show it through this parameter. Fox translucency and fox uh, deepness, it's dealing with fake translucency and fake deepness. And this is a severely ozone pattern. Let me zoom out. Um, this is the air captured inside the, the ice. So you can play with that as well. Okay, um, I think that's it. And of course, you need to connect that from a textured coordinate, as you can see right here, and then the shader result will go to the material output. In, in, inside the group, you can also uh, put textures. Textures, use, uh, you can use textures. Let me see if I can just mark this, connect the texture right here. So you just grab that, connect it there, and then you will have your texture displayed in this ice shader. Now, like I mentioned before, everything here has been named identify so you can come inside the group and continue play with different parameters it already has for example if you don't want the animation just click the ice shader select the keyframes delete them and then you will get rid of this animation so that's no problem if you press zero you're going to get to the camera view and if you switch to the compositor view uh, down here we have the shader editor on the right side, we have the 3D scene, on the, and on the upper side, we have the compositor. If you press F12, you're going to get the compositor plus the operations that I set up with all of these nodes so that this uh, render can look a little bit more anime style. Now, if you want a full background, okay, you can compare um, before doing that in this split node you can compare the image before and after the effects as you can see it brings more uh, beauty to it it brings more appeal so let's go back to the image editor this is the end result from the image editor from the uh, render result you can click on save as image and you can save your image for your uh, posterior use So once you open this file for the first time, you're going to see that this is blank. So the first thing you need to do is to press F12 so you can get the compositor to work and also the image viewer to show you um, the final result on this specific scene. Now, um, I'm going to activate the mist block that I have right here, the mist geometry. And what that is going to do is going to um, add some um, uh, not particles, um, like a smoke kind of thing, and the, the light is going to make it react, and it's also going to be evaluated through the compositor, therefore creating this marvelous image, which you can see and check out on each of the color channels that you have available. Now look at that, isn't this a beauty? Alright, thank you very much, if you like this video, please do not forget to subscribe, hit the bell notification button and I hope to see you in the next video with more amazing stuff that is coming up for the 10k celebrations in this channel.